James here from the XIR team. And in today's video, I'm excited to share with you an advanced time-saving culling workflow using XIR Search 2026's smart selection tools. Now this is ideal for photographers who regularly deal with high volume shoots, whether it's weddings, events, portrait sessions, and you want to automate as much of the selection process as possible. Now, if you haven't yet watched my other videos on XIR's calling features, I recommend that you go and watch those now and then come back here because I'm going to assume that you have some familiarity with XIR's calling functionality. Now, in this video, we're going to use the same batch of nearly a thousand images from a real couple's pre-wedding photo shoot. And our goal is to take this large image batch and narrow it down to just a handful of great shots for editing, delivery to clients, and so on. But instead of manually flagging the best images, we're going to let XIR's AI do that work for us, which means we can get from a thousand images to our final selects in a few minutes at most. Let's dive right in. So here we are in the Lightroom library module and I've already selected the folder containing the various images, almost 900 from this photo shoot. I've also already opened the XIR search panel by hitting Alt plus X or Option plus X if I were on a Mac. And it can be minimized to just a strip if I wanted to do that. But for culling photos that include people, I really want the panel's full preview capabilities. Generally, I place the panel in one monitor and the Lightroom Classic window in another monitor, but since I'm recording on one screen, I've positioned it so it fits on the right-hand side of the monitor, and then we have Lightroom on the left-hand side here. Now, in our XIR search panel, we have our three culling functions right here, and I'm going to start a culling project by clicking the top button here, and here's the dialog box that comes up. Now, in XIR Search 2026, there are three fundamental AI-powered culling capabilities. First, XIR can evaluate each image for blurriness, exposure issues, and closed eyes, and then apply rejection flags to these photos. Second, XIR can group your images into helpful collections. For instance, XIR can group all your visually similar images into collections, so you can then go through and choose the best image or two from each set. You saw this in my basic culling workflow video if you watch that. Third, XIR can sort your images according to criteria that you select. As I explained in the other workflow video, when you're sorting a group, you'll need to use this button here. But in the smart selection tab here, we see options that correspond to the criteria that XIR can use to evaluate and sort images. And smart selection here essentially combines these last two capabilities, that is grouping and sorting. First, the AI breaks down your image batch into useful groups, and you can choose what these groups are right here in the relevant groupings menu. Then the AI sorts each group according to the attributes you select, whether that's aesthetics, global sharpness, eye sharpness, facial expression, or all of these criteria at once. And finally, the AI applies a pick flag or stars or a color label to the top photos in each group, which will send them directly into the selection collection on the side of your screen. And you can tell AI which marker it should apply to the top photos in each group right here. And then right at the bottom of the smart selection tab here, you can tell XIR how many photos you want it to choose from each group, either a fixed number such as two shots from each group, or a percentage of the group here. So for a group of 20 visually similar images, if I were to type in 5%, I'd end up with one image, the XIR flags. So while the smart selection options might seem a little complicated, they're actually fairly easy to use once you get the hang of them. You just choose a grouping, you decide how you want XIR to sort your photos, and then you tell it how many photos to pick from each group and then just click start. So first I'm gonna head into the grouping tab and just like before, I'll choose to group by visual similarity here to cluster the similar looking images together and then capture date using 15 minute intervals or quarter hour intervals here. If I were calling a batch of event photos, by the way, 
the people group here would be extremely useful since XIR would create a collection corresponding to each face that it identifies. And that way I could make sure that all the wedding guests, say, were represented in the final selection. But here, with a couple's photo shoot, it's not that useful. So I'm just going to go back to the Smart Selection tab. I'll make sure Enable Smart Selection here is checked at the top. And then I'll choose Visual Similarity as the relevant grouping to pick from here. And I'll tell XIR to pick based on sharpness here, so global or general sharpness. And then let's say I'll uncheck this. I'll choose Eyes Open to ensure we're picking well-focused images with flattering expressions. And I'm going to tell XIR select two images from each group. That's already dialed in here. And since I was working on this earlier, by the way, I know that some images have already been flagged. So I'll come back here to Selection Marker and I'll say Reset Selection Marker initially. And then I'll hit Start. And XIR will go to work grouping, sorting, and picking images. When it's done, we get this dialog box, which shows me that XIR has chosen 147 photos from my batch of nearly 1,000. Now in the Lightroom Collections panel on the side here, I now have a new culling project set. And inside you'll see collections organized by visual similarity here. And then also capture date. And if I open the XIR search panels uh, culling group view here, I can instantly see an overview of my different groups with the numbers across the bottom here indicating so how many images are in each group and then how many images have had pick flags added to them. And if I click on a group in the panel, if I double click on it, then it's going to open up in the Lightroom window. And I'll also get a view in the XIR search panel of the first image. And I can just go through these by using the arrow keys on my keyboard. And by the way, if I just want to see quickly which images were flagged from each group, if I come back into Lightroom here, I can change the sort option at the bottom of the Lightroom window to pick. And then if I scroll up to the top here, Lightroom shows me the images that were picked by XIR. But if I were aiming to do this fast, I really wouldn't review each group at all. Instead, I'd just go right to the selection collection. So let me pull that up here and I'll minimize these. Here's the selection collection. This contains all of the images that XIR selected and I can just do a quick review either scrolling here so you can see these pairs of uh, similar images. Or just by going through here where I click and I use the arrow keys. If I like an image, I can just leave it alone. But if I don't think that an image makes the cut, I can just unflag it by hitting U on my keyboard and it will be removed from the selection collection. And if I want to check face sharpness, I can always look at the magnified faces on the right here. And I can also look at XIR sharpness metric, where green indicates a sharper image. Anyway, at this point, all I need to do is finish reviewing the selection collection. And my goal, by the way, isn't really to ensure that every group of photos gets represented in the final selects. It's to make sure I end up with a set of quality images. So then once I'm happy with my picks, if I want to do a final check of the photo shoot as a whole, I can always look at my captured date collection set with its 15 minute chunks. And I can quickly go through clicking and then maybe just looking the Lightroom classic window here. Maybe I'll increase the thumbnail size so I can just go through really fast and make sure that there's nothing important that I missed. For this type of portrait session, that might be less important since the goal isn't really to represent an event over a period of time, but for wedding shoots or 
even like landscape photography taken in a single location across several days, it could be something worth checking. And one final thing I'd like to add, even once you've run Smart Selection on a batch of images, you can run it again by clicking on the Smart Selection button right here and adjusting the relevant groupings, the selection attributes, and so on. And if you didn't run Smart Selection on a culling project, but you decide later on that you do want Xire to pick your best shots for you, you can use the button then too. This smart workflow is fast, it's powerful, and it's impressively accurate. I still do recommend doing, say, a quick pass to make sure that everything does look good, but the AI still does 95% of the work for you, which saves a ton of time. Plus, since it's all non-destructive, you can always just go back and adjust the smart selection parameters as needed, or you can go through the different groupings manually. Of course, smart selection is not going to work for everyone, and that really is okay. Xire's calling tools are flexible, so if you only want the AI to create the groupings while you then manually apply the flags, that's an option, or you can always use Xire's sorting feature to speed things along if you want to add in a bit of extra AI input. My suggestion is to just give Smart Selection a try, especially if you do a lot of shooting. If it works for you, then you'll save an unbelievable amount of time. So thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, go ahead and click that like button. Of course, for more tips and tutorials on Xire's AI-powered photo management tools, go ahead and subscribe to our channel.